you learned about probability density functions for continuous random variables, and now we're going to talk a little bit more about them by going through three notes in particular. All right, so the first note, here I've drawn a PDF for some um, random variable, and I just made this up. Uh, so here's the PDF. Now, we can notice that the PDF is a lot taller here than it is over here. So what we're going to see is that the height of the PDF can clue us into which values are more or less likely for the random variable to take on. So if we look at this value labeled D, the random variable is going to be likely to take on values pretty close to D. And then if we look at the random uh, this value A, the random variable is less likely to take on values near A than near B, and we'll know that because the height of the PDF at A is much shorter than the height of the PDF at B. So if we remember back to how to calculate probabilities, uh, then the probability that X is between A and A plus epsilon, where epsilon is some small positive number, that's going to be approximately the PDF evaluated at A times epsilon. So if we just think about uh, calc 1, we know that we can approximate the area under a curve with just a rectangle and calculate the area of that. All right, so the probability that x is between a and a plus epsilon is about f of x evaluated at a times epsilon. And similarly, the probability that x is between b and b plus epsilon is approximately the PDF evaluated at b times epsilon. So if we have the same width for both of these intervals, in other words, we're using the same epsilon in both of these cases, then because the PDF evaluated at B is much greater than the PDF evaluated at A, then the random variable is much more likely to be between B and B plus epsilon compared to A and A plus epsilon. All right, so that's our first note. Our second note is when we have a discrete random variable X, we can calculate the probability that X is equal to some value T by using the PDF uh, PMF directly. So remember, this was how we wrote our PMF in the discrete case. But when we have a continuous random variable X, we cannot just say PDF equals the probability. It's not true that the PDF is equal to the probability. Remember, we need to take our PDF and integrate over it in order to calculate a probability. So if we want to calculate the probability that X is between A and B, then we just calculate the integral from A to B, and we integrate over our PDF with respect to T. All right, third note. Again, we're going to do a little comparing and contrasting for the discrete case. Um, when we have a discrete random variable X, then the PMF is always less than or equal to 1 for any value that our random variable takes on. So this is important because, remember, the PMF represents the probability that our random variable is equal to, in this case, K. So, of course, the probability has to be less than or equal to 1 for any value that the random variable takes on. Do we have this limitation in the continuous case? Definitely not. Um, so one example, just to prove that this limitation does not exist, is if we have a uniform distribution and it's uniformly distributed between 0 and 1 half. So we saw the uniform distribution before over a different interval. Now we're looking at the interval 0 to a half. So here's our uh, PDF drawn. It's 0 before 0, and it's 0 after 1 half. And then within the interval 0 to 1 half, we have a horizontal line. And to figure out the height of it, we can, uh, again, calculate the area. We know that the area is equal to 1, and then this width here is one half, and then the height is gonna have to be equal to two in order for uh, length times width to be equal to one. Okay, so this height is equal to two. So that means that our PMF, PDF, is equal to two when t is between zero and a half and is zero otherwise. So here we can see for this uniform distribution from zero to a half, we have our uh, PDF equaling two, which is definitely greater than one, so we see definitely this limitation does not exist for continuous random variables. 